and you weigh the right things on the right side and the wrong things on the wrong side. Cosine equals 87 divided by 105, the square root of 105. I mean, I can't always be their little girl. Walking and talking begin to engage the world on their terms. Self-aware, freedom-loving, resilient, all this and more. Describe these eager, undisciplined participants in life. Resourceful as they are, toddlers still require continuous adult guidance and care. While they struggle for independence, they cling fast to the bonds of attachment formed early on, usually with the mother. Visiting the lives of three different toddlers, we will see that each though unique, provides a remarkable insight into this special time of growth and development. Month-old Tyler Andrews lives within the steady routine of a middle-class household. His parents aid his development every day by talking to him constantly and by involving him in their morning routine. That's the boy. Let's brush your teeth. Yeah, that's the boy. Let's brush those teeth. Turtle, that's right. Comb your hair. Good boy. You wanna wash your face? Turn the water off. You wanna wash your face? By helping out with cleaning, Tyler learns to contribute to the household. Good shot. Very good. Make sure you're closing the hamper. Put them in the hamper. Good job. Okay, let's get spring our treat. And when Tyler helps to feed the family dog, okay. he is doing a necessary job that he can perform well. There you go. Just give her one. Good boy. There you go. You want to take some medicine? No. Oh, it's okay. You like taking medicine. Like other toddlers, Tyler frequently asserts himself. Sometimes his parents find it hard to appreciate these attempts at independence. Tyler, want a drink? Oh, come on. You like taking the medicine. The most frustrating thing about Tyler are his temper tantrums and refusal to do things, just everyday things. Putting on his clothes, washing his face, um, things that he's decided he doesn't want to do at that moment in time. You gonna have a good day at school? Good boy. You be good. Say hi to Dina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In key areas, such as language development, Tyler's parents encourage initiative. Hear the siren? Ooh. That's right. See the lights flashing? It's like your police car at home. I used to be real anxious about Tyler being in the car, that he'd get upset. But now he likes to look around and we talk about his ride and we uh, look for big trucks and, and buses and, and things like that that he's interested in. He's just really into the ride when we're driving and looking around. And he, he points things out now to me that I don't even see. Tyler has attended daycare since the age of six months and recently moved into a toddler unit. Even so, parting of mother and child can be difficult. I used to think before I took him to daycare that I would miss every first moment that he had. And I know that now when I see him do something for the first time, that's the first moment. It's not when he really did it, it's when I saw it. Tyler's language skills have increased since joining the toddler unit. Where's Tyler's ears? Here they are. 
Miss Taylor's note. His motor skills, both fine and gross, get a constant workout. Way to go! Good job. Good job. Although caregivers are always nearby if needed, the center encourages self-sufficiency by placing sinks, tables, and personal possessions at child level. Tyler seems to possess a particularly strong sense of independence. I think that Tyler has the best care he could possibly get, except maybe from his mother. <laughs> um, actually, I think he's better off where he is for the kind of child he is, because he's so active. I can't keep up with him all of the time, and I know that the stimulation they give him with all the different activities, that he's better off probably in daycare than he would be in a home. But it also helps because when we do come home, we spend all of our free time, or we try to, with Tyler. And so he's getting constant attention all day. In addition to providing stimulation, the center provides a daily routine. Tyler always eats with the same three children at the same time each day. Even fun activities, like group singing, happen at the same time each day. After all the activity, there is nap time, which does not necessarily start as quiet time. Throughout the day, Tyler remains focused on his work, even when Mom comes to pick him up. Are you drawing? But once back in the home environment, his attitude changes. happiest is to see Tyler happy when he's laughing and playing and just happy about everything it just it makes me happy I mean just I guess that's a cliche but it does that's probably gives me the most joy is when he's happy I love when he finds new things out in the world and he just enjoys them to me that's probably my biggest kick little spotty calf goes moo Little spotted calf couldn't find her mommy. Where's the lamb? Where's the little woolly lamb? That's right. Well, how does the little woolly lamb go? Ba, ba. Dominic Cortez is actively learning about his heritage. Dominic really enjoys his dance lessons when we come to the Southwest Museum or when we talk about dance, you know, is Dominic ready to dance? He's like, yeah. Yeah, and then 
we have tapes at home, so uh, ever since we've been attending the class, we have tapes where we put them on, uh, and he's ready. You can tell his movement, you know, he's ready. He has his drumstick. He, you know, is, is basically excited when, when he comes. Dominic's instructors at the Southwest Museum in Los Angeles are Ben and Marshala Hale. They teach Indian children their ancient culture and counsel them on confronting modern prejudices. They also get to talk about the problems that they may face in school, which uh, teasing, which often happens to Indian kids in L.A., because most likely they're going to be the only Indian kids in that school, and uh, they sometimes have a problem with uh, identity. Indian kids have low self-esteem sometimes, and I think the making of learning how to make your outfit, learning how to dance and sing, it, it really helps them and uh, to be a, a whole person when they grow up, and then it's something that they can also pass on to their children. Many of them have no exposure to Indian ways, and, and this might be the link, the key, for them to to open up this whole different world, this whole world uh, inside themselves, as well as outside, that there is there's something within them. La, la, la. Who's that? Big Bird. Big Bird. La, la, la. With a Puerto Rican father, Dominic comes from a mixed ethnic and cultural background. My role in Dominic's life is like a buddy-buddy. A um, I love him so much, though, that, that uh, he reminds me of me. In, in so many in so many ways, Dominic needs me. He needs me a lot. I'm just a big influence. He he um he wants to he wants to be me, and I kind of want to be him. Why'd you do that for? Never want to be old Hogan. How come you threw your gloves down? That is okay. That is not hurt. That is not hurt. Oh, it's me. That is okay. Okay. Good. And Dominic's dad strives to make learning fun, whether the lesson be picture identification or potty training. I'll say, let's go, let's go, let's go potty, Dominic. Let's go potty, Dominic. Quick, let's go. And he runs to it, and he gets excited too. And when he does his job in there, he really, he's, he gives me high five. He's, he's real good in there. He gets excited, too, when he knows he, he did good. And that keeps him going. Uh, look at balloons. Balloons? 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 Dominic's development is also influenced by his older brother, David. Like a doggy. Dominic and David, have, they have a great relationship. They um, get along all the time. I tell them that they are the best friends, that they, they will be with each other forever. So they have to um, share everything they have. Everything we do get them is for both of them. Um, the relationship is great. They get along all very well. They miss each other at times when they don't see each other enough. Dominic is trying real hard to get all the attention that he can because I think he has to compete with his brother a little bit. So whatever whatever his brother says he tries real hard to say it ben gives me pretty bustles i know is that right pretty. Is that's a nice that's a nice outfit is there a lot of kids dancing out there mm -hmm. tonight it's going to be a lot of people because this is going to be the new dance class right? tonight 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 you started the new one right that's a lot i know it'll be nice i like it i want to see dominic dance There are children in, the, in this class from many different tribes. So we, we try to learn our, as much as we can and, and encourage them to learn as much as they can so they can tell us and teach us at the same time. And that, to me, is, is the true Indian way. This, this way of this drum, the songs, the dances, the stories that go along with them, that's what we relay here to the children in hopes that it will make them be as proud as I feel about myself about being American Indians. Dominique, uh, he's a real good dancer. He's, he looks like he's, he's been dancing for quite some time. To me, it shows me that if you really want something, if you really like something, it's easy for you, and it came to him really easy.
little butterfly earrings, huh? <laughs> For two and a half year old Rebecca Garcia, life has been a roller coaster. We were really in a bad situation when we became homeless, going from motel to motel and not having any type of structure at all and just on a, on a daily basis just going from place to place. Thanks to community social services like St. Joseph's Center, Pam now enjoys a less chaotic home life for Becky and her other two children, seven-year-old Ebony and three-and-a-half-year-old Raymond. Children can adjust to being low income and maybe not having as much as other people have. Um, they can adjust to a lot of, of the everyday difficulties, but the lack of stability, I think, is the most difficult. Children need a stable living environment. They need to know what's going to happen from one day to the next and who's going to be taking care of them and who's going to be picking them up from school and where they're going to be living. And for, for low-income families, and particularly for single mothers, this stability is very hard to provide. Raymond, come down and eat! <laughs> Raymond, get up. What kind do you want? This kind. It's pretty kind. Papa? Becky communicates in different ways. She will either point or talk. Milk? You want milk? Children are isolated. Moms are very busy trying to get the money, trying to fix the meal trying to see whether they can collect some money to uh, buy the next pair of shoes. And they're not talking to their children. So one of the symptoms that we see very often is that children come in, they, are, they have speech delay. They're not talking at their level. They're not, the pronunciation is not there, neither in the native language, nor in English, nor in any other language. No, I'm not going to hear you. Come on. Go upstairs. Come on. Lack of support from an extended family increases the pressures on mom and on Becky. I become lonely during the holidays because this is the, the second year in a row that my parents and I have been separated because they moved away last year. And I've always been with my family and my sister. I just look for the kids and towards St. Joseph Center to see what facilities and things they have going for the holidays keep me busy. My stress tends to go toward the kids at times. When I've got so many things going on, or I'm really upset, or I feel denial, then I tend to take it on to my kids. I give them less attention, or I tell them I don't feel well to just bear with me and to just let me help me get me through this. And I just look onto their support just to make them understand how I feel. Okay, let's go, guys. Because mom is so stressed out and she's so worried and she has all these problems, she's not talking to her children. And when they need attention, she's hitting them. So we work on that. She's not harming them, but it would help if they were being encouraged to talk and to have a relationship. They are so depressed, they are so worried about everything else, that's not happening. The other thing is nutrition. These families don't have everything they need to nourish their children. Therefore, they're not growing as fast, or they're not um, achieving the height that they're supposed to. They, are, um, they don't have the energy. Their, their small muscles are not developing um, as the other children are. Hi, Oscar. Good morning, Pam. How are you? Fine. Do you want flour today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys have any butter? The free food pantry at St. Joseph's has helped Becky and her siblings to overcome anemia and vitamin deficiencies. Great. You guys are sweet. Okay. okay thank have a you. nice day. Bye. Too. Bye. And the babysitting Bye. program benefits Bye. mother and daughter. Let Teresa know that she already ate breakfast. Okay, yeah, come in to this this I And she's tired. And I'll be back at 1 30. Mm -hmm. Like most children her age. Becky grows upset when she's first separated from her mother. However, she soon becomes content when given the opportunity to read and interact. Where's the house? Where's the house? Okay. okay. All right. Good. The children, when they come into our program, 
in crayons that they're very popular anywhere and they're cheap and most people think everybody has crayons. Now, many of the children that come to our program, to St. Joseph Center, come to find out about crayons here and it's hard for them to hold a crayon in their hands. And it's because they're not doing anything at home. There isn't anything that is motivating them and creating a challenge for them to keep on going. Becky's mother pursues a job training program to improve the condition of her children's development. I feel I'm not providing enough for my children, that I'm letting them down by not working. They look forward to me coming home in, in a good mood, that I'm making money, and that they're going to benefit from it. And I want to give them that back by working again full time and giving them what, what they ask instead of telling them I cannot afford it. Family circumstances sometimes offer special challenges to growing children. If provided with adequate care, however, toddlers can be remarkably resilient. The children that come to our child care program adjust beautifully and are so happy to be part of the program that it makes us feel good just to go in and see them. Becky is always a joy to see. We see her here every day and she's always happy and smiling and, and delighted to be here and part of the St. Joseph family. Tyler, Dominic, Becky. Three children, three different lives. All done? Uh, Hello. You're not all done? Thank you. Come brush your teeth? Tyler learns family values and community culture through a stable daily routine enriched with activities designed to promote his development. You ready to go to school? You ready to go to school? The material cost of the family lifestyle, however, keeps both parents at work all day, reducing parent-child interaction. Dominic experiences quite different family circumstances. His parents are very concerned with making sure he cherishes his ethnic heritage. And their work schedules allow Dominic to spend a lot of time with his dad. And the special attachment between the two shows. Becky learns through her mom coping mechanisms for living with poverty. As the youngest child, she must also compete with her brother and sister for mom's limited attention and resources. Different circumstances influence children in different ways. Those who study children characterize the toddler years as a time when children take their first steps toward autonomy or independence. This fundamental change means a shift in family relationships and frequently causes conflict. Why don't you want to go bye bye? The importance of language development now becomes clear. To gain autonomy, a child must first learn language and then skills for conflict resolution. Becky, though older than Tyler or Dominic, often communicates through pushing, fussing, or screaming, perhaps because she's had fewer adults encouraging her language development. Tyler, the youngest, is surrounded by adults who value and encourage his development of language skills. In that corner, we have Dominique. In Dominic's daily interactions with his dad, the focus often seems to be on development of psychomotor or physical skills. Dominic, don't do that. Don't do that. Dominic, like other toddlers, often uses nonverbal means to express his frustrations. Even while toddlers move towards autonomy, the
The quality of the attachment relationship with the mother or primary caregiver continues to play an important role. That is okay. That is not hurt. In fact, struggles for autonomy can be made more difficult if a secure attachment relationship was not formed during infancy. This has led many researchers to be concerned about the effects of early daycare on development. No, you have to stay. Mommy's going to go to work. Pam will hold you while Mommy goes to work, okay? Can I hold you and watch Mommy go out the window? Watch you and say goodbye. Okay? Give me kisses? No kisses, okay. Alright. When Tyler was six months old, his mother returned to work. Will this affect development in a negative way? Some researchers feel that the quality of care is the real issue, and that children such as Tyler may benefit from the combination of quality daycare and loving parents. Even under conditions of hardship, like poverty, children can develop a kind of toughness that may help them cope, especially when a parent like Becky's mom provides love and models coping skills for the child. In the lives of young children, the influence of parents is critical, even when they are not present. Dominic's parents have made the important choice to arm their children with pride in their heritage. This may well serve to protect Dominic's self-esteem and promote resilience when he more fully confronts the world beyond his home. Tyler, Dominic, Becky. Like all toddlers, struggling to balance the need for autonomy with the need for attachment and bound by the unique circumstances of their lives circumstances that will powerfully influence their development throughout childhood. <laughs>